Good morning and praise the Lord. I'm trusting that we are well. My name is Praise Otieno, one of the pastors here at Nairobi Baptist Church Westlands, and it is a delight to bring us today's word. Welcome to Sunrise. Uh, our main focus this morning, we are going to look at Galatians chapter 3. We've been running a whole series on the book of Galatians, and uh, today our main focus is going to be on the book of Galatians chapter 3. And uh, we want to look at verses number 1 to verses number 5. And allow me to read and then we'll get into it. So this is what Paul writes in Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 3 from verse 1 to 5. This is what he says. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Do you receive the Spirit by observing the law or by believing what you had? Are you so foolish? After beginning in the Spirit, are you now trying to attain your goal by human effort? Have you suffered so much for nothing, if it really was for nothing? Does God give you His Spirit and work miracles among you because you observe the law or because or, or because you believed what you had. Now, from the beginning of the series, we have seen that uh, Paul is talking to several churches in the land of Galatia. He's not talking to one church as compared to other epistles, but he's writing to several churches. That he, once in one of his missionaries, missionary journey, he went and preached the gospel to them. And uh, right now, there were some people who crept in, some false te teachers, the Judaizers, crept into the church and were preaching a gospel that was contrary different from what Paul had preached earlier before. And so in this particular chapter, we see that from verses 1 to verses 5, Paul is trying to use uh, these people's own experience as a defense for the gospel. Uh, from verses 6 to around verses 10, we're able to see that Paul uses scripture, the life of, of, of the father of faith, that is Abraham, as a defense for this true gospel. And uh, from verses 16 all the way uh, to, to verses 29, we're able to see that God, that we're able to see that Paul is using uh, basically uh, uh, the law uh, as a defense for the gospel. And so today we are going just to look at verses 1 to 5, and Paul is using uh, their own experience how they came to 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 this saving faith as as a defense for 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 this gospel and uh paul in verses one he begins uh this chapter with very strong words he calls uh the churches or rather the people who are fellowshipping in galatia he calls them as foolish he calls them bewitched now for paul uh you'll, you you might think that uh that those strong words may, may seem offensive uh, for some, but Paul is justified to use that strong, those strong words because he once went to the nation of uh, to, to, to Galatia and preached the gospel to them. Christ was clearly uh, portrayed to them. They became, they, they trusted, they confessed their sins and trusted in God for salvation and they were saved. But later on, the Judaizers came, uh, and so this is what they were telling them, and and this were this were they were basically telling uh, these things to to the Gentiles that uh, for you to become a Christian, for you to become a Christian, for you to believe God, then apart from you are you believing in God, apart from having faith in God, then you need to add to your salvation. You, we need to add to the gospel. We need to add works to the gospel. And one particular thing they were saying is that you need to be circumcised for you to become completely a Christian. You need to be circumcised and you need to continually observe the Mosaic law, the laws that, that Moses was given by God to be uh, for, the, for the children of Israel to follow. And so basically what they were meaning is that really Christ's work on the cross was really not enough. And, and this thing angered 
Paul and that is why Paul is using very strong words making a case that justification is really by faith alone and so that is what we see uh, in in the, in the in the life of Paul that justification is by faith alone he calls them foolish he, he, he calls them that they are bewitched and and, and basically uh, he is He's not really saying that they are under a spell or anything like that, but Paul is is really saying that uh, they 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 have Christ was laid barely, um, but they have failed to use uh, the, their power of perception. Whatever they have learned, they have failed to use it, and so. Paul is, is, is telling them, "Can you engage your me- mental? Can you can you engage your your reasoning faculties? Because whatever I preach to you was the true gospel." So they knew what they were taught. It was laid plainly unto them, but basically they were not using it. In verse two, Paul is saying that, uh, "I just want, I just want, I just want to learn one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by observing the law?" Or 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 was it uh, by faith? We able to see that uh, every believer, once one who confesses his sins and puts his trust on God, he is sealed with the mark of the Holy Spirit, and so it is clearly by faith. But at one point, they 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 started to believe these Judaizers who wanted to add to the gospel. They they wanted to add works to the gospel and commentators say that uh, whatever he said when Paul says before your very eyes Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified uh, the word they basically use is, is, is like a placard it's like a billboard uh, when you walk around town we see billboards of various items that are being you know advertised and this is what Paul is saying that Christ was laid out plainly to you like, like, like billboards you know this is what Christ has done. Trust in him. Put your faith in him for your salvation. Not really for your works. And so they really do not have any, any, any other reason why they should go back to what they used to believe in. And so Paul is, is, is amazed that are you that foolish that what was laid clearly to you uh, you have deserted. And, 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 and in verse 3 saying, have you now uh, after beginning uh, in in faith, are you now ending in works? Did the spirit come by your own human effort, or was it by faith in trusting the Lord Jesus Christ? In fact, in verse four, he tells them, uh, "You have suffered a lot of things uh, because of believing in this faith." Jesus Christ promised that in this world you shall face many troubles. You shall be persecuted for his name's sake but he told us to cheer because we because he has overcome the world and so for them just just by believing in god they suffered because of this very same faith but it is interesting that they have deserted and so paul is asking them was your suffering for nothing that you can just walk away from this true and genuine faith and then in, in verse 5 Paul is even saying that uh, there, there were some miracles that happened because because of this because of this because of this faith that God worked miracles among his two. and so basically uh, the gospel was clearly laid out uh, in, in the churches of Galatia, but uh, because of the Judaizers that came in and preached uh, a false gospel, a gospel that uh, it deemed them to work. To, to, to add on to the gospel, they went astray because of that. And basically, one of the things that we, that we are learning uh, uh, from this text is that uh, the churches in Galatia, this, these people, they were genuine Christians. They were genuine Christians. They were walking with the Lord each and every day. That the Spirit uh, was... The Holy Spirit was working in their lives. The process of sanctification. They were regenerate. But how comes uh, some of these false teachers crept in and, and, and they wandered away. They, they warded off from this true gospel. And one of the things that, that we can learn from, from this Bible that some of us, as believers, some of us in the household of faith, have we by any instance 
added to the gospel have you by any instance not trusted that Christ did his work on the cross that it was finished he says in John chapter 14 verse 6 that he is the way the truth and the life no one can come to the father except through him uh the the reformers coined uh the word sola christus sola christus meaning christ alone that salvation is by christ alone it is by faith it is by grace through faith and so have we at any moment in time added to the gospel have we tried to 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 to, to add to the, to the gospel that this salvation we can we can add to it by the many things that we have done in order to basically just please god or have we trusted this god that all was finished on the cross that when jesus christ died and he resurrected that our lives when you simply repent of our sins and confess that he is lord have put our faith in him and trust him for salvation then we are saved and so we really do not need any to add any other thing to the gospel in fact one will say that the only thing that qualified us for salvation was our sins that christ uh there was substitutory uh atonement that happened on the cross that christ took our place uh and he became sin him who knew no sin became sin that we might have life and so we took on righteousness and he became sin and was crucified on the cross believe us what paul is contending here with the churches in Galilee is that justification is by faith alone that we really do not need to add any other thing to the gospel that Christ work is enough that Christ work is is sufficient for us to live uh, a normal or rather uh, a complete christian life in this earth may god bless you